água. Água, papa, água. Alright, we have George live here. And George wants to talk to you about something very important. <laughs> so stay tuned. Very important, alright. But we'll see what comes up throughout the, throughout the trip. Yep. We were just talking about how, you know, the bit of bottle. What were we talking about? Uh, we were just talking about the flood. Yeah, that affected the lighthouse. Que pasó? Yeah, it's Sunday. Yeah. My liquor cool. store is closed. Mm -hmm. Hey, we talking about the no liquor. Don't talk about liquor. Talk about liquor. What about liquor? Talking about liquor. Not talking about liquor. No, but yeah, all this flooded up too, didn't it? Yeah, it's pretty crazy. It flooded, all right. It flooded. So, oh, yeah, the lighthouse did that stuff. Is that a walkway? So George wants to tell you about his gardening knowledge, green thumb. Uh, so, how would you start a food forest garden? He's one of my students. Um, he's gonna share with you how to start a food forest garden. Uh, first of all, my first day. <laughs> I couldn't really tell you too much. I'm mulch. But I'm pretty sure yeah, mulch has something to do with it. So, yeah. He knows that much. So he hit it. You know, right around about, he hit it. It's the covering. Ching, covering. You see, everywhere you see the earth, the ground is covered either by grass, weeds, mulch, leaves. It's covered. That's the key. It's covered. And because it's covered, it stays in place, it holds, it builds. Um, that's what I want to tell you about. Uh -oh. um, about food forest gardening. It's the foundation is it's just the floor. It's it's the florist floor. Yeah. So that's number one. Once you get the foundation of the forest floor, then you can build. But did you know that plants are actually farming us and we're not farming the plants? Pretty crazy. Let me tell you how. Um, well, you see, they live, well, trees, for example, they outlive us, right? So they give us oxygen right we think we're giving them water we're giving them something but they don't need anything from us they're giving us the air because they give us oxygen and we give them carbon dioxide whatever carbon dioxide <laughs> Car <laughs> uh, yeah and uh, co2 pretty much and the thing is that they don't need us but what i'm trying to say is that they're farming us because we're eventually going to die and we're going to be buried in the soil and that's where they get their nutrition from so they eat us in a way right they end up eating us all the decay that we rot decompose they eat us up again and then they just provide more oxygen so more of us can die so more of us can go in there and feed them I guess we do get apples and things like that from the trees and stuff like that from the woods, but somebody had that quote up there and I thought it was pretty crazy because in a way, in a sense, it is kind of like that. I never thought of it like that. Hey, but do you remember what was there before that dollar store was there? Okay. You sure? Uh, not sure. We can probably look at Google pictures. But yes. Way off topic. Um, way off topic. Um, 
Yeah, he's a new student. Um, <clears throat> he knows that if you want to have uh, non-pesticides, you want to grow all your stuff, like have a variety of it. You don't want to grow all one kind of corn because if you get the corn bug, if you get the corn bug, it will wipe out all your corn. So. Um, so yes, um, you want to diversify it as much as you can to build soil fertility. And, um, let's see, anything else that you know? It's first day, guys, so. First day, I don't know much. Just water your plants. They have to need to be watered. Yes. No, I just let the rain do this. But we are zero watering. We're doing pretty much as lazy gardening as we can. Let the rain do its thing. Yeah, let the rain do its thing. That's the key. You don't need to intervene. Now, because you want to set up the land and the contour, you know, in ways that water just, um, water just holds it itself, holds within the land, you know, but doesn't get wash off too far away. So, yeah. That's that. Uh, let's see. What else is very important? Another thing is that with the food forest, of course, you want to plant perennial food. So you're not like plant like some burnet salad. I know it's really bitter. Probably it'd be sweeter in the uh, spring and in the fall. But a little different taste or some uh, red vein sorrel, or just some French sorrel, instead of lettuce. Uh, grow perennials, like uh, sea kale, instead of just regular kale, which is a perennial kale. And things like that. Uh, of course, there's no perennial tomatoes or cucumbers, or things like that, but, um, you know, you wanna grow your fruit trees and your berries, uh, but, Whenever you're first starting out and you finally got the foundation of the floor, then you want to start introducing all these variety of plants. And the first things that are going to be easier for you to get are going to be seed plants. So like things like annuals, uh, corn, uh, you know, all your vegetables pretty much. All your vegetables and some herbs. Those are going to be your easiest to get. Uh, if you can get your hands on fruit trees. And what you want to do is plant the fruit tree there in the middle and then plant you know some berry bushes around it and then some herbs and then uh, and so on that kind of stuff um, so and then you know you want to make it like companion planet planting it's called a yield um, but you in that in that uh, what do you call it companion planting you want to what you want to have is beneficial, like for them to benefit each other. Plant side. It gets a little bit more in depth. I'll go over this later on and show you guys in the garden how I am applying these principles to my garden. Um, for example, you have the tree in the middle and then you'll put various plants around it. Like let's say uh, comfrey, which is a nit nitrogen fixer. So feed that tree for the rest of its life. You just plant that comfrey right there. You cut the comfrey leaves and use it as a mulch. So you're doing that and it's a live mulch. So you start to get into this where you really don't need anything. The garden does it itself. You're just kind of like the steward of the garden, if that makes sense. So um, just got to get out there and harvest once you have it all established. The first year, you know, you may have to straighten up some trees, cut some plants, but later on it's just a food forest established. Um, yep. That's do you true. have any questions? <laughs> no. I just like to eat off the garden bed too. He enjoys eating off the garden bed. See, he's got to get out there and understand it and grow it because it's really easy. But people that have never grown before, I'm sure, or think that this is hard, but it's not. Um, 
it, it is hard if you're having to till, if you're having to spray, if you're having to fight the weeds, fight the bugs, um, you know, all the stuff that comes with gardening, your soil's not producing, you don't know why your plants are drying out, because the soil is exposed, you're having to add too much fertilizer, store-bought fertilizer. This is a simple way of gardening, it's just copying nature and it can be easy. It can be really easy. So that's that guys. Uh, I won't keep y'all any longer. Um, I just wanted to give y'all a uh, 101 on, uh, on this gardening that I believe everyone could be doing if you really want to save the planet. Like most of these people say, I mean, think about it. George, tell them how they can save the planet with gardening. By going green. Okay, so you go green and what happens? So you have your okra in your backyard, so now you're not having to buy some plastic thing at a store, right? Nope. And uh, since you're not having to buy some plastic thing at a store, um, And the okra. Okay, so let's take it. Okay, let's take it. That okra usually grows in the crop, and then we can go on and about what happens while that okra grows. I mean, it's mass produced, it has tractors, you know, you have tractors, there's one, you know, just wasting fossil fuels and whatever. Not. Um, you know, then it gets picked and all of this stuff. You got workers, you got, you know, and then you have the truck, you have the packaging, you have uh, the marketing, you have the store, you have the electricity, you know, it's just all of this which makes the economy go, which, you know, at the end of the day, they profit a lot from the okra. And uh, so, with that being said, or whatever, apples, you know, they're bagged in a plastic bag, all of this. It's just, if you were to just to grow at home, or buy orga or, uh, organic local. If you can't grow, I understand. Um, you don't want to grow, I understand. You can buy, you can at least support your local farmer's market. So, for those people that are growing organically, and that helps the environment. Um, but yeah, just food for thought. That's how you really save the planet. That's the only thing you can do. I mean, you're not gonna save the planet by skipping school. You're not gonna save the planet by um, having the rich come over here and just, um, you know, take our liberties away of oxygen, pretty much, because they wanna claim that we're running out of air or we're running out of water or we're running out of, you know, whatever, trees and all this stuff. We have to take action in our own hands. And, that's the little that we can do right there. So, I think that's all I have to say about, about that. Yeah, Thank you for watching. Uh, subscribe. Uh, yeah, this is uh, my sister. And uh, she's single. Uh, ready to mingle. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, yeah, thank you for watching. Like, subscribe. Hit the bell icon to be notified of, of later on content coming out. Hey, 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 turn! And uh, I'll go around. And and yes, uh, thank you for watching. Thumbs up. Share with your friends and family. Till next time. Bye. Later. Bye. 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 Bye.